Tony Parsons, great to see you. Good to see you. You've watched a few five minutes, haven't you? From the very start. <laughs> I remember when you were interviewing Bollywood actresses. Now I'm interviewing Tony Parsons. It's going to be five minutes. Could you please count us down? Five? Oh, I have to put the battery in. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Do you have a favourite singer? I do have a favourite singer, Aretha Franklin. Do you have a favourite band? Um, I have a favourite band, The Clash, for sentimental reasons. What are those sentimental reasons? Uh, that we grew up together. Actually we were, together, you knew them? Well, we, no, we were boys that became men together. We started out together at the same time and, um, and I loved them, and I loved them. Did you know them? I knew them very well. Do you have a favourite classical composer? Um, I, Mozart, I think, writes pretty tunes. Do you have a secret desire to be a rock star? No, I do have secret desires, but not to be a rock star. I think because I, I had a shot at that, I could have you know, learned drums and joined the Clash if I'd have wanted to. But I do have secret, secret burning desires, but it's not that. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Um, I wanted to be a writer. Um, I wanted to, I, it was the one thing that um, I felt I was halfway good at and the one thing that I felt that if I dedicated 50 years or so to, I could, I could get reasonably good at. So I'm still trying. Tell me about your relationship with music. Well, when I grew up um, in the 60s, music was really central to the life of most young people in the West. And it was just a, an embarrassment of riches and a great time to be growing up. So we had, music was at the center of our world, I think in a way that it's not really anymore. Um, so music was always there. Music was always the most important thing in, in my life and a great, a great passion. Are you disciplined as a writer? You have to be disciplined as a writer, otherwise the bank come and take your big house away from you. So I'm very disciplined. Yeah, I'm a, I mean, you can't always do it, but I'm a thousand words a day man. Do you feel pressure when a book deadline is upon you? Um, no, I feel pressure from people liking older books, previous books, earlier books. I feel that pressure that you, you, don't, you don't want to disappoint people. You don't want people to think, well, he used to be pretty good, but now he's not quite as good as he used to be. Um, I, that's the pressure I feel. I don't want to let people down. I don't want to let the people that like me down. Do you have a career identity? Do you see yourself as a novelist first and foremost, or as a columnist? Um, I think I have a, a clear identity, but um, I don't see anything as, as first. You know, I mean, I'm, I, um, the writer that I admired when I was growing up was Keith Waterhouse who was, um, when I was 16, I wrote to about 200 people asking them how to become a writer. And the only person that wrote back to me was Keith Waterhouse. And he's always been a bit of a role model to me because he wrote plays and he wrote columns and he wrote novels and he did it all brilliantly. And I think the world sets so many limitations on us that we shouldn't impose them on ourselves. What do you think the secret to being a successful columnist is? Um, I think you need to be in touch with the mood of the nation. I think you need to, even if you disagree with it, you need to know what people are saying. I mean, a few years ago, uh, my wife and I, Yuriko, were talking about moving to Tokyo. Um, she's Japanese. And one of the reasons that we didn't is because I wouldn't be able to work as a newspaper columnist. Because although with modern technology and modern gadgetry, you can be anywhere, allegedly, but actually you need to be just hearing what people are saying about the snow or the Chilean miners or the cuts or the students and all that. You just need to, to feel it. What's it like knowing that lots of people know what you think? Um, it's quite reassuring, really, because um, you, you become a sort of, um, if you stick around for long enough, you become a bit of a queen mum figure, I think, in this country, that um, people accept you. And, um, and it's a very positive experience because when people, it's on a, you know, my fame is on a very modest level. So when people approach me, it's usually to say something nice to me. People don't come up to you and say, you know, I thought the last novel fell, fell down a bit in the second act. You know, they don't bother saying that stuff, you know, they just ignore you. And it tends to be the people that like you that um, approach you. Have your politics changed over the years? 
I don't know. I don't really. I don't really feel that they've changed. I mean, I I grew up in a working class household, and I think my um, my views not just of politics but of life and work and family are shaped by that. Um, so I think in many ways I'm quite old fashioned, but I don't. Um, I don't. I don't feel that I've changed that much over the years. I don't feel that um, moving from. I mean, I grew up in a a shop above a greengrocer's um, establishment, and I don't feel so. Um, not have changed that much. That! <laughs> it just five flew minutes. by. I can't believe that. It just flew by. Are you sure you didn't move it on a little bit? No, I can tell you I would have liked to have more time with Tony Parsons, but five minutes is all we get. Well, maybe, you know, I'll come back when you're doing ten minutes. Thanks, Matt. Really good to see you. Good to see you, yeah.